Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet the sandstone throw, which you can see here in the photograph in front of you. Also, if you head on over to my blog at richtexturescrochet.com, you'll find some more photos of the blanket as well as the free written crochet pattern. I'll provide the direct link in the description of this video uh, so that you can find it over there. Now, uh, today we're going to make this sandstone throw. The sandstone thro throw is a blanket that is made with a super bulky weight yarn. I am using the Karen Sprinkle Cakes, the new lovely layers one. Uh, the color is the Mocha Rainbow. Uh, and uh, you can see there's these little specks of rainbow color throughout. It's a super bulky weight yarn, a wool and acrylic blend. So if you want to substitute this yarn for another, I would just select another yarn with that number six on the label. Super bulky weight. Uh, each of these cakes has about 193 yards in it. To make the blanket without a fringe, you're going to need seven of these. And then I used almost the whole cake for my fringe on the ends. The fringe is optional. I, uh, I feel this the stitch that's used in this blanket tends to curl a little bit and the fringe helps to add weight to straighten it out. So this is uh, my corner of my sample here. Sorry, I hit the camera that you can see. I have my fringe here on the end. I love solid texture blankets and that's what this one is. The blanket is worked as one piece and it has one simple stitch pattern throughout. This is the front of it. Now I also love the back of it. I love the texture and the weight of this blanket. So both sides are absolutely gorgeous and great to curl up with, uh, curl up under uh, with a good book. So uh, you'll need seven to eight of these cakes, super bulky weight yarn. You're also going to need a 10 millimeter crochet hook and then just a yarn needle for finishing off and weaving in any ends. So thank you so much for joining me while here. I invite you to subscribe, take a look around and uh, you're sure to find something that you love. Now this blanket is worked in rows and it is a simple uh, two row repeat once you have worked your first row. So for it, you're going to start by making your slip knot. And then you're going to make your foundation chain for my blanket, which measures approximately uh, 49, 50 inches by 56 inches. So for my blanket, I started with a chain of 125. Now this blanket pattern is very easy to adjust because there is no particular stitch multiple needed. You can simply chain your foundation chain to the size that you desire. So I started with a foundation chain of 125 stitches. Now, once you have your foundation chain 125 chains long or the desired size, uh, today in the video, I'm just going to work a small swatch for you. So I haven't quite chained that many, but once you have it the desired size, you're going to start by working your first row and your first row, you're going to slip stitch into the second chain from your hook. So count in one and two, slip stitch, into that second chain from your hook and then into each stitch all the way across. Now I, I know that there are a number of people who do not like working with slip stitches but I find with this super bulky weight yarn and the large 10 millimeter crochet hook uh, the slip stitches are a lot easier to work. So you're simply going to slip stitch in each chain all the way across. At the end of your foundation chain, at the end of your row one, 
We'll have something that looks like this. You're going to chain one and then turn your work. We're now going to continue working slip stitches, this time into the back loop. So if you take a look at the top of your stitch, you see this nice V here on the top. The back loop is that loop that is farthest away from you. So you're going to slip stitch into that back loop only, into that first stitch, and then continue all the way across. Always working only under that back loop only. When you come to the end of your row two, you can chain one and turn your work. At the end of your row two, this is what your work will look like. Chain one and turn your work. We're now going to continue working slip stitches for your row three. This time we're going to work them under the front loop only. So once again, looking at the top of your stitch, you see that nice V shape. The front loop is the loop that is closest to you. And you're going to work a slip stitch. I work under the loop and through and slip stitch into each stitch all the way across. At the end of your row three, you can chain one and then turn your work. At the end of your row three, your work looks like this. You're going to start seeing it look a little bit like a uh, purl stitch there in knitting. So you're going to chain one and turn your work. You'll see the back. And for the rest of your blanket, you're going to simply repeat your rows two and three. So your row two was slip stitch in the back loop only of each stitch all the way across. At the end, chain one and turn your work. And then your row three was a slip stitch in the front loop only of each stitch all the way across. Chain one and turn your work. You're going to continue doing that uh, for your blanket until it measures approximately 56 inches or until you've reached the desired length. So if I show you here, there's the back. When I flip it over here, there's that rib texture there in the front coming through. So continue to repeat this pattern until your blanket measures 56 inches or reaches your desired size. Then you could fasten off, weave in any ends. It's that easy. You can leave it as is at that point. Um, or you can come back here and I'll show you how to add a ta uh, my tassels, how I added them to the bottom of my blanket. Now, once you've worked your blanket and I've only worked a small swatch of it here, you may notice that it is curling here on the ends and that is normal for this stitch. Uh, what you're going to do or what I did is I added a fringe to both of the shorter ends of the blanket. Now to do that, I took an extra cake of yarn about um, 200 yards there and uh, I cut lengths of yarn about 12 inches long. You may want your fringe longer or shorter, but I cut it 12 inch strands. For each of the little tassels, I used three pieces of yarn. So I just cut three lengths just like that. And then into the ends of my blanket, I started at the corner and into that first slip stitch, I inserted my three strands of yarn. You might kind of have to push them through. Uh, feel free to use a crochet hook if it's easier to grab a hold of them. 
I pull them through and this is there's many ways to do a fringe this is just the way I like to do it because it creates a fairly secure fringe and uh, it's really easy <laughs> so I folded it over half way like so and then I simply tied a knot wrapping all the strands around my fingers pulling them all through and then pulling that knot tight up to the top just like so I then repeated that process every second stitch so every second stitch I tied on three strands of yarn doubled over so you have six there coming out every second all the way along each of the ends of my blanket and then in the end, once you're all done, you can trim those ends across the length of the blanket so that they're all even. And you should have a fairly nice, thick, and even fringe. And that's all there is to working this super bulky weight sandstone throw blanket. Super easy, super cozy. I hope that you like this project. So thank you so much for joining me. Once again, I invite you to subscribe and uh, be sure to come back soon. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye. Mm -hmm.